for quick access at the field or if you want to swap out motors on the you know you don't have to desolder everything and resolder everything so these little bullet connectors I'm sure everyone knows how to do it but we're just going to show everybody how we do it here um, it's really simple and we're going to actually show you the whole setup here and how to, how to make that setup so first step what, what we do we take a first we're going to move these off our working area and put these in a safe place and don't drop them because uh, they're sometimes they're really hard to find so first what we do here we take our take a piece of scrap a piece of two by four it's a simple scrap piece of wood. Actually, this one's easy and has a big uh, nail in it. But what, what we're going to do, we're going to drill six holes, or as many holes as you want to do. We're going to drill our holes in here, and then we're, what we're going to do, we're going to slide these into the holes as like our little mini holders. And we use wood because it's not it's non-conductive of heat. It doesn't get anything high around it. Um, you can use anything that's a holder. You can use a vice grip. You can use lock pliers. You can use, I've seen it all being used, and I've actually used them all, but I found the wood works the best. Okay, first we're going to do is grab our drill and our drill bit. This drill bit we're using here is a 11 64th um, size. And as you can see, we have one starter uh, hole here. And that, that little uh, bullet connector fits perfectly in that little hole. Not too large, not too small. Holds it nice. Um, also, you don't want to go that you don't want them too deep because you don't want them to go fall through or too large and they'll fall through. And then it kind of defeats the purpose of this little, little jig here. So what we're going to do, we're going to mark uh, about every two inches, we're going to mark a hole and drill six holes right here. Hopefully this part will be in fast motion so you don't have to box and drill six holes. Female on this side. And the three male on this side. Okay, okay, while our soldering iron heats up, I'll just show you what we use here. We have an old, old, old 40 watt um, Weller's soldering iron. This thing is probably uh, 15 years old, I suppose. And then what I think is the most important part is the solder. We use simply just use a Radio Shack um, 6040 rosin core solder. It's um, this one is a .032 diameter. It works, seems to work the best of all the solders I've used and uh, this one works absolutely great so if I recommend a solder this is the one I would use I'm sure there are hundreds of others that work out there but this is the one we use right here well so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the hot, the uh, heat and we're gonna heat up the outside of the um, bullet connector here and what that's gonna do it's gonna basically heat this whole area up and then we're gonna fill the little cup if you will up with solder again we'll put our heat on there let it get nice and hot. I'll try to let this one see here. Yeah, this would be tough so the camera can see here. But you get the idea. We're actually gonna fill this sucker up with solder. I probably was talking too much last time. Fill it with solder. A nice little bowl of solder right there we have. Simply take our wire, any wire, we will take the black one this time, or whichever comes to the surface first. Alright, yellow. So we'll take our yellow wire, put it into the hole right here, take the heat away, let it cool. Okay, for the last bullet connector here, again we're going to put our heat source on there. Let it sit there for a couple seconds, let it nice and get nice and hot. And then you start filling it up with solder. It's kind of tough here so uh, the camera can get the view here. Okay, fill it with solder, get your last wire, that black one right there, and you simply just you just get it in a little the look at the hot melting solder, take your source heat source away. Okay, the shrink wrap, it comes in plenty of sizes, plenty of shapes, plenty of colors, um, plenty of lengths. So what what you need here, we have this shrink wrap right here. It um actually fits over the joint right there 
and once you put the heat to it, it will shrink down to size. So what I want to do here, I'm going to take a sharp, sharp razor, brand new from the, from the package, and cut myself three sizes, about yellow. And that yay is probably about an inch. Place your heat shrink over the bullet connector. And what I like to do is I like to stop it just below the um, springs. And also, what you need to do when you're cut, like I didn't do here, is you make sure your lines are, your cuts are, are square. If you have them off, you're going to have definitely have some exposure. So if you have a square side, always keep that up, and the, the bottom side can be off a little bit. So what I like to do is make sure it's right up to the top, or right below the springs. And we'll get the other two on here. And here's our big long one. I'll let you look what that one looks like. This is actually going to almost cover the whole wire here. And this one's a little pain to get on too. Okay, so right below the springs we have all three. And now it's time to get our heat gun. Okay, we have a heat gun. I'm sure you can use a lighter. You can use just about anything. What you can, but I, what I really recommend is wait for the wires and, and the bullet connectors to cool down after you solder them because if you put them on too quick and it's not in perfect position, it will definitely will shrink on you, and then you have a, a heat shrink that's halfway stuck on the on the, on the wire, which is pain. You're gonna cut it off and basically re, redo the shrink wrap. So what we have here, we just have our, our shrink wrap exactly where we left it earlier. And this part is really simple. You just leave it on, and I like to just hold it hold it down, make sure it doesn't go anywhere with the wind. But turn the heat gun on. Give it a little twirl. Curl around, get the other side, and voila, we are done with our motor. There's our motor, there's our bullet connectors. It took us probably, what, about five minutes to do that? And that's a professional look, and we also made our little jig. Okay, we have the speed controller all done, shrink wrapped, soldered on, ready to go. And for the shrink, for the speed controller, I like to, if you can see here, I like to keep the, the shrink wrap all the way to the very tip because what happens, you don't, I mean, the idea of these is to keep the gold connectors not to touch. The shrink is, so if you have a touch, you can short that out. But, so I like to keep mine extra long and sometimes, I, if you can see here, I even like to overhang them. Um, and what you do, you simply just get them all together and you just plug them in. And I, the best way to do it, the best, the, you know you did a good job if you have minimal or no, no gap like that one right there. But here you go, you have your speed controller and your, um, motor all hooked up ready to go. The best part is if when you're hooking your motor up you don't know which way it hooks up you just simply unplug any of them and you plug them back in. And you're done.